Five star. <laughs> Love it. Welcome back to the Competitive Edge Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Hickman, where fathers learn from fathers to sharpen their competitive edge as an athlete and in life. This is episode 16 tonight. We have a very well-known dad athlete, the voice and brand of a very challenging hybrid fitness race called High Rocks. Mr. Eric Botsford, who also goes by E-Rock, lives in Denver, Colorado. A little more chilly over there than over here. I'm kind of sweating. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm in a closet. Um, but a father of his two daughters that are 17 and 15 and 43 year old works as a director of partnerships for again, faster and the director of business development for high rocks. He also, uh, is a nationally ranked water skier and wake wakeboarder. I didn't know about that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh seven time CrossFit games, regional athlete. So before we jump in there, I want to talk to this gentleman. But we need to show a lot of love to all the hybrid races and companies that allow us to race and compete. Uh, first off, High Rocks Anaheim, April 22nd, is the last chance for us uh, guys in the U.S. to take advantage of that and get to the World Championship. Uh, Florida DECA events and Colorado events. We got Orange Park April 15th at Adrenaline Fitness right down the road from here. And then in Colorado, I saw that there's two there, Fit OCR and Red Zone Naco. Uh, virtual events, Battle Bunker, and Grit Games are going on this week. But most importantly, another virtual event is Criterion. That's run right. By, run by <laughs> E-Rock. And uh, we'll, dive, we'll dive into that virtual event um, towards the end, and we'll kind of give a quick little snapshot on that now. But, yeah, Mr. Eric Botsford, E-Rock, thanks for coming on the show. Tell us more about you, man. Yeah, what absolutely. So, yeah, super stoked. to. I know that you and I have crossed paths a number of times, and – and for many of, of the folks that are out there, probably like, you know, you've seen me at a no, like, you know, just over the years, um, uh, you know, most people kind of know me from the Tough Mudder world, right? Like that's, that's kind of where I came into the scene, like as a MC and I was like a big personality back then. Um, but yeah, like as you, as you kind of pointed out, right, it's, you know, the past few years, it's been all high rocks all the time. So, uh, but yeah, like, you know, we, uh, we kind of had a, a fun, fun upbringing, uh, myself that is, uh, you know, just a as an athlete, my whole life, right? Like, so that, that's been my, my whole jam. Um, and then kind of just every time I kept leaving it, I kept getting just pulled right back in again. So I, I just finally like threw up my hand, said I'm all in. And, and, uh, so athletics and sport have kind of been my, been my jam for, uh, you know, since I, I, I was a fireman for a bunch of years, that was my, that was my career. And then, nice. uh, just, just left that for, for the for the fitness and health game and what i found is that like you know as probably you and a lot of the as you you kind of coined it right there father's kind of talking about it like you know we, we're always uh establishing our mission statement or re reevaluating our mission statement i do it once a year and i always did it with all my athletes it was the three p's for success right always revisit your principles that leads to your purpose and then what are you doing to persistently drive towards those goals and those that three piece for success is something i've had for for a long time so I like um that. so yeah that it's and and it kind of defines kind of how how we're going so again kind of taking the that framework coupling it with like what i'm doing with like sport and fitness keeping everybody together as a community and that's that's kind of who i am so uh, yeah, kind of a roundabout way to answer that question, but, um, <laughs> but essentially kind of gives you a good snapshot, right? It's, it's, it's all, yeah. everything that I do is, is kind of like about a few different things, right? Um, you know, providing for my family, number one, number two, it's about yeah. providing a community, uh, for everybody out there to kind of feel a part of something. Um, you know, as a lot of athletes, team, especially sports specific athletes or team sports specific athletes growing up, um, we all kind of like once we leave that world, we're like, ah, what do we do? And so I've been blessed to kind of like, I had CrossFit and then you know, obviously the Tough Mudder family, which embraced me uh, fully. And then now I'm actually the one getting to create the, the High Rocks family. Yeah, that, that is just phenomenal. And I, I remember going way back and I didn't know who you were. Um, it just, I forget what challenge it was. It was like a PFT challenge world record or something. And it just, attached to me and i was like i gotta do this i gotta mm -hmm. it was like this cross big crossfitter from like invictus or something like that uh um, oh joshua yeah josh yeah yeah he beasted it and i was like man this is like calling my name and that that was a time when like ocr was kind of was kind of becoming really good with me but i 
feel like I realized I didn't fit in with the, the skinnier guys that were, you know, <laughs> hanging around like monkeys. And um, I had the grip, but I was something was missing. So hybrid and high rocks just that just called me and mm-hmm. um, I'm glad it came around. I appreciate you making it big in, in the U.S. here and getting the word out. Well, that's and that's just what it was, man. I think, yeah, again, like, you know, you're wearing the gear right now and it's it, it's it took us a, a while to, to get to that point where, I mean, in the beginning, it was, I mean, we, I literally was, you know, when I, we first took this thing to the States, it was like, okay, what, what is this thing? And, you know, I was, I kind of came from the CrossFit world, but I also like, I, you know, had the Tough Mudder Foundation. So I was like, I know these people are out here. Like the people that go to, yeah. to OCR, you know, that, that, that are looking for that community that like that type of fitness, that want that kind of what we call that hybrid, you know, style. Um, but then I also had that firm, you know, basis in, in fitness. And so, I mean, we were, I mean, I was like paying my CrossFit friends to come out to these events and we were doing a bunch of crazy stuff to like, you know, I was flying around the country. I always give this, uh, you know, in building high rocks, I always talk about how I was like, uh, if you watch the movie Fight Club and Tyler or, or Edward Norton's character or Brad Pitt's character, that Tyler Durden, like, you know, where they, he, you know, he's just like got amnesia and he's just like flying from city to city, like starting up these yeah. fight clubs. That's basically what I was doing for the past, like, you know, few years, like with high rocks, just like. Yeah, it worked. Texas, L.A., New York, Chicago, Florida. I mean, we were in Florida, you know, I mean, we had to like yeah. during COVID, it was like Orlando. I don't know if you ever came to the Orlando one, but yeah, we were, I was, yeah, was I was all over one. the place. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I've been busy though. <laughs> oh, it's absolutely awesome. And just listening to like podcasts with like David Megiddo and people like that. It was, it was cool, man. Um, so it, what's new with High Rocks? I mean, obviously we know what's going on. There's the go rock there's the relay there's the doubles the singles the open what's what's coming down the pipe here yeah so yeah really really exciting stuff obviously um the the sport itself is in in a okay well to kind of to answer your question let me go back a little bit so when i came into tough mudder it was really cool because you know ocr kind of did this thing where it was like crescendoing 2011 2012 2013 so high and then it kind of plateaued off and so I kind of came in around that time where it was kind of like this flat line, like still high. You know, everyone, there was a bunch of people doing it. Well, High Rocks, we're getting to build this thing when it's still growing. And so mm-hmm. one of the coolest things that High Rocks has got going on right now is just this global expansion that I think a lot of U.S. athletes don't really take into consideration too much, um, but that we on this side like are paying a lot of attention to. Growing faster than any other sport in the world has ever grown. Uh, that's where that's where High Rocks is at, and that's what I think a lot of your your viewers, listeners like should be kind of paying attention to is like this thing, this community that we're building is only in its infancy. I mean, we're talking yeah. like you know we're just now to the point where we're selling out venues here in the U.S., which is like a monumental feat. I'm telling you, yeah. I've literally bled for this for this brand to build this thing here, and like when we were producing you know, races in LA with 200 people at them, you know, now, and we're, you know, we're, we're on a, we got that event in June in New York yep. at the Meadowlands place where it's two days, you know, we're selling out, yeah. we're, we, we got to, we have to host two day events now. So I think the growth is, the growth is something that here in the U S we've, we've seen this small incremental stuff, but here, here, let me drop some numbers to you real quick. So yeah. we, we, uh, you know, obviously we're talking about opening new markets. Well, um, the UK, I don't know if you've paid attention to any things over there, but all of their events, I mean, they have, we have our biggest event coming up in London here pretty soon with a, nearly 10,000 athletes, 10,000 runners over two days are going to be running the London event. Scotland, we opened that one up a few weeks ago, or it's been probably a month and a half ago now We had 4,000 people in the first ever race, like show up to, to the Glasgow, uh, race there. So I think the, from the excitement aspect of it. Um, you know, we can dive into the Elite 15, and I know there's probably a lot of your your listeners that want to talk about the Elite 15, and like you know, like just and we'll get to that. Let's let's get to that because I'm really excited to talk about it. But yeah, yeah. I think just overarching, I think what people need to keep their eye on is we just signed Hong Kong, right? We're gonna have a couple races there, which we're getting into. Once we get into Asia, that's a whole new world. I mean, it gives me just sick and skin just thinking about it. It's like we're talking millions and millions of people that are going to be exposed to this and blow this thing up. Australia, the same franchisee that's going to take over doing Hong Kong is also going to take over uh, Australia. And so Australia is going to open. And if you know anything, I lived in Australia as a water skier and I, you know, went down there back and forth a lot of times and 
it uh its population is going to literally explode with high rocks like that's going to be insane and then mexico city we've got coming up those guys i don't know if you were at the uh, the houston event but we had a huge uh, group of of, uh, of mexicans that were there that were taking over they they run a bunch of other events as well. They run like the Spartan. They have the franchise for Spartan and Tough Mudder and stuff, and they're they're taking over uh, that side of, of the business. So again, big thing. And then Canada, if you got any Canadian listeners, like that's that's a special one for me. I, I, uh, yeah. I I'm kind of spearheading that that kind of move. So we'll see uh, we'll see how we'll see that thing grow. But um, so yeah, I think that's that's what I'm fired up about with High Rocks. Absolutely, I'm pretty sure there's several past Canadian hockey teammates that I have that are just kind of washed up, ready to kind of get their skills back out there. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, I I do remember just kind of like the energy of kind of seeing you for the first time, and it was pretty cool. It was very welcoming. I loved like the loud music when I first walked in. It was just like the vibe was like, okay, this is for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then just seeing, uh, like, after I won something, like, I took a picture with you. You're like, yeah, man. Yeah. It's, it's just cool. It's just it's really cool energy. And uh, it's it's cool. And it, it gravitates to the next person. And it's way different than OCR. And, you know, when it's OCR, like, you got to wake up, like, stupid early in the morning. <laughs> like, and then you have to worry about the morning dew. And then um, it's just not fun. So for now, like, I feel like I'm spoiled where I get to kind of, like, I could fly in that morning of the race if i want to um or just sleep in which is totally cool but, yeah um but yeah congrats. well that's that's just it it's it's just it's a family affair for sure and certainly yeah. as somebody as somebody who stood on the start line and i mean we used to do a tough motor we had you know fifteen thousand people in a day i'd be at the warm-up you know doing we did 28 warm-ups every 15 minutes with 300 new people in front of us yeah. and you're in there in the the snow the rain the wind like to go to a high rocks event where you can like literally if you've if you see me at high rocks you normally see me skateboarding into the venue uh with a coffee in my hand and i'm like okay let's let's do this thing yeah it's what 6 a.m yeah. okay that's fine i mean some of the high some of the tough mudder events i used to have to go to we'd leave the you know we'd be out way out in the middle of the sticks and have to leave the uh the hotel at like 3 30 in the morning just to be you know on site yeah. and just to find out that the rain came in that night and blew the whole thing over <laughs> you're just like god damn yeah, you know um so yeah it's it's uh it's quite nice to be indoors there, you guys get there early too because I, I remember new york city i just couldn't sleep i woke up early and i'm like i'm just gonna go for a jog and then i ended up seeing you in the lobby get a coffee or something i forget what it mm. was and then i kind of just like let you leave because i'm like i'm i'm just like getting in the, in the yeah yeah in the zone in the zone you know and then like you're coming back from your like your coffee to go to the building and i'm just like hey what's up man <laughs> yeah um morning morning warm up but yeah. um that was a cool day man just one one try i got the podium which is cool and what was the other gentleman's name um that announced everybody and, and passed out the at the time for new york city he was um, at, like different do we have a like, few different people there uh gosh who, who i can't remember his name i follow him on, on on instagram he always had like like standout shorts that he would always wear i forget his name Oh, uh, Kyle! It was a coach, the, the, not the DJ. No, no. Uh, it's all good, but yeah, he was really cool too. It was just, it was always fun to see you there. And then I saw like the My Zone guy there. Yeah, and then it became a part of My Zone. Um, but yeah, going back to the UK stuff, I I see all their posts. We're part of a WhatsApp for My Zone because yeah. I'm on the team My Zone. So like, we see all their updates of like what they're doing. So I don't follow too much outside of that, but. Anything that's going on that's new in the UK, I, that's in that list there. But, yeah, and let's uh, talk about it, dude. Here we go. We got Manchester coming up, so that's going to be yeah. a huge one. I mean, but we're going to be over there with for the World Championships. We're about to blow the UK away, dude. It's going to be so cool to have the US athletes, like, you know, on the UK soil, um, everyone going head-to-head. -head. I mean, we saw that in Chicago, you know, not too long ago. We had the North American Championships, and it was yeah. wonderful for me. You know, because and for all for everybody that, that follows the sport to have that many European athletes over on American soil. And, and certainly now we have this, you know, we got all these Spanish guys and everybody else like the Germans will all be in this kind of like neutral territory of the UK. So, yeah, that'll yeah, be fun. It's cool, man. And yeah. uh, the fact that um, Vegas was pretty cool. It was like 22. Different of course. Countries over there. Just like that introduction was was just groundbreaking um it was yeah. such a great experience to be part of 
Yeah, if you, if, I mean, if, seriously, if, even if you're not even competing, it's just it's worth it to go there because if there's one thing Christian, the, the founder CEO, like likes, I mean, he comes from like that world of triathlon and you know big sporting events and, and that type of thing. So putting on the show, yeah. you know, for that, I mean, think about it, dude. Like this is a mass participation sport, but if you qualify, you are treated literally like a professional athlete. Like I mean, you're going over there, you did the parade of nations, like coming I into know. the venue. I mean, how That's special cool. is that, right? It was huge. And uh, so we had Miami. What, how'd that event go? Oh, man, let's talk Miami, dude. I, I mean, if you caught any of my social media or anything, I mean, really just go back and, and look at any of the reels that, that Graham was doing, putting out. Um, huge, huge success. Let's put it into context here for you. So we had, over the course of the weekend, we had uh, Mayor Suarez, mayor of Miami, who is a potential presidential candidate. Uh, he was there, ran the race, rad guy. Um, with his brother. Uh, we had the mayor of Miami Beach. We had five commissioners uh, from the city of Miami show up. Uh, a ton of press. I mean, I think that we, it's fair to say that we made a hell of a good impact on on the city and certainly, uh, you know, the, the Chamber of Commerce, like, uh, you know, people want us there. And so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that from an overarching, like behind the scenes stuff, like the political side, which Miami is a very political city, like is definitely uh, in our, the, the, the winds are in our favor, you know, so to speak. And then from an athlete's perspective, I got to tell you, dude, anybody who raced Miami is, gets a huge nug in my book, dude. They're, they are a warrior and a champion because racing in the sand was brutal. I got to do, I did the, uh, the relay, stepped in for Dylan Scott on the relay and that was, you know, fun. And then the next day, Sunday, uh, I had a gentleman, a fireman come down that, uh, couldn't race on Saturday. So I raced with him on, on Sunday, just me and him, just me and him solo out there on the course. And, uh, and it was, and I will say we did it in the morning. So I didn't have the 2 PM sun. And, and if there's any ladies out there watching or listening uh, to this, I give you a lot of credit because after that 2 PM, when the sun was directly over us, Oh, bud, it got so hot out there, brother. Oh man, tough. brutal. Yeah, I mean, I, I was out there and it was tough. I mean, I, luckily for me, I, I raced two races, you know, OCR races in the sand. Um, and I run in the sand here in the beach, but, uh, that was, that was definitely hard and it felt great when you finished, to be honest. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, in the whole weekend, you're just sitting there staring at the ocean. I mean, it was, it's, oh, it's unparalleled. Right after. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, so for sure. Cool. You got to, you got to. So, um, yeah, mark your calendars, dude. And we've released it. I mean, says, uh, what, what was it? No, not September, October, October 18th. We'll be back down in Miami. So we'll, we got oh, that kind of coming up. Yeah. Or I don't awesome. know if I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to, if I'm supposed to say <laughs> that yet, but, but yeah, it's the date's right confirmed. Yeah, there you go. Um, and then, and then for sure next year, uh, Again, the, the city wants us out there for the for the another another round of this uh, iteration of the yeah. Miami Beach Fitness Festival. Well, I I believe it because uh, when I was you know talking to my wife and a couple of volunteers came by after and they were like, "Hey, how do you get in this? How do you train in for this?" And and you can hear them they're like, "Hey," when they left, they're like, "Hey, I'll see see you uh, see you ne next year." They said, mm -hmm. um, so like the vol even the volunteers knew like, "Hey, this will be back." Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. um, so that was cool. And then you recently just won something with Graham for doubles, right? Uh, well, we, we actually, we went out and, and raced the course. Um, this was like, so we do the Friday live streams and then we, you know, just, we, we were like, dude, let's just go, let's just do this thing. Cause we, I'm always working. So I never, ever, don't ever get to like race on the day of. So we actually went out, timed ourselves, like did it properly and came in at an hour, an hour time. So like, I think if Graham and I really put some work into it, I think we could be in that 55 minute range and be pretty competitive team. I don't know if that's allowed, but it's a, uh, but it's certainly, I mean, I, I still have that fire inside me that I want to just beat everybody all the time. So, yeah. um, it certainly is, uh, and I've paid my dues. I mean, even before, before I even worked for, for higher Ox, I, I raced, uh, you know, I raced the race when I first heard about it. Cause I was like, Oh man, I got to do this thing. And, and so I did the pro category and, and certainly men's doubles versus pro men, friends pro is, Oh, it's like a, you're chilling. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to yeah. put, you got to put the gas, you know, the gas on, on the run. But other than that, you're, uh, you know, intensity, but not as survival mode. Exactly, dude. Exactly. But, um, I'm thinking about flying over and, uh, doing a race next weekend in, uh, in Germany, the Cologne race and, and just going yeah. to racing men's pro again. But, 
because uh, I don't have any men's uh, men's doubles takers to to kind of roll with me. So we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to race, man. I just want to compete. That's cool, man. I mean, you're just stellar, stellar shape, man. So you're good. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So obviously, competitive edge. What does that mean to you? Yeah, I, I think that's you know one thing that I always I always talk about. Again, we we talk. We talked briefly in the beginning of this about those three P's for success, right? That principles, purpose, and then persistence, right? It's like, it's the, it's the competitive edge you have is twofold, right? It's the people you have around you. Um, I think developing, and that's again, feeds into my mission statement of like creating a community through fitness. Um, and that is, you know, so you, you gotta have that, you, you gotta have that kind of, um, I think that the greatest athletes are the greatest, you know, folks that are just like out there pushing it, pushing that have that support system behind them. It could be other athletes. It could be people that are like, you know, just assisting them. Like, you know, we're both married. Like, I mean, how many times my wife has gone to CrossFit competitions just to like make sure I eat my food and like pick up my stuff and I'm on the start yeah. line at the, at the right time. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So, that, so first off, the competitive edge is, is a, a 1 million percent the community that you have around you. And then number two, it's discipline. I think, um, I, I, I mean, whatever, I, I just, I, I, I was never taught it, but I just, I've always had this like just insane drive to just always push like myself. I mean, every morning I wake up at 5am and I'm just like, let's freaking go. You know what I mean? Because I know from my years of just being an athlete or whatever, like there's also everybody else is that, that that cliche of like you know while you're sleeping somebody else is out there training like I always think about that I literally it, it like burns into my brain and so yeah I think discipline community those are the two things that that uh, kind of like lead into the competitive edge yeah man I, I there's a couple things I can relate to that I mean try we are the tribe we are the people we hang out around with mm -hmm. um, because there are people that would like to put speed bumps in front of you but there's also that people that really want to just ignite your fire uh, and make you better which is totally cool um so you gotta choose your people wisely and uh mm -hmm. discipline is huge um we I thought about the this is my first interview in this podcast and um by chris healy and uh, he's a special agent retired and he always every day points a video after his workout of a poster from his training camp or whatever it is just talking about like how there's there's people in prison that are training right now um, so kind of what you said, like, you, yeah. you know, if you're putting in work while people are sleeping and that's, you know, that's, that's an important drive you got there. Yeah, dude, it's it, the discipline and it's, I swear it's part of it's cause people ask me that all the time. Like, oh man, like, you know, how do I get into it? I'm like, you just gotta like, it, like, it's one thing to start the habit. It's the other thing to like make that habit, like just such an innate part of your lifestyle that it just, it's like second nature and like it's something that like possesses you. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Like it's, I think yeah. discipline is just, I mean, discipline's like how I'm like always a good father, like how I never miss a moment with my kids, you know, disciplines, yeah. you know, how I just, I make sure that like, you know, everybody, I have my wife and my kids' cars and everybody's like, everybody's like, you know, they're, they're, everyone's going to get to where they need to go safe. Like, it's like this constant thought of like, all right, are all those boxes checked? Is like everything like solid? And part of that's just like me being a Virgo, like very, very organized and logical, you know, type of guy. But, um, but yeah, I think it's just, it's just something I've, I've just had since I was like a kid, like this desire to just like, just keep pushing. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, but it's cool. also got me into some crazy stuff. <laughs> like, you yeah, know, I used, to jump, sure. I used to jump out of airplanes and helicopters for a living. So, you know, yeah, I've also done that side, too. <laughs> well, you've, you've harnessed the wild stuff and made it organized. And yeah. just, that's how you thrive. It's cool, man. Um, so where where did this competitive edge kind of come from to compete? Where, how long, like when you were a kid, like when it's. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it was um, again, it was it was really self-taught. I wasn't ever really pushed too much like, you know as as a kid i just always had um i always had this like this deep-seated like drive to kind of just like keep up or do something like to be the best like i i, I always like my, so when i was like a little kid 
all I wanted to ever be was a professional water skier. That's it. Since I was like a little kid, that's it. Like, um, and I think probably for a lot of people, they're like professional water skier, like what? But like, it was something that it was just, uh, it was something that I looked at this magazine and I saw like, uh, you know, like old school dudes, Andy Mapple, Wade Cox, like these other dudes that are just like legends in the sport. And I was like, I sit, you know, watching them go 60 miles an hour on a ski around a bunch of buoys. And I was like, this is just what I, that's what I want to do. And I had, you know, the, the classic young, kids room with like all the pictures from the magazines all over the wall so that's where i got that and then um i i always tell the story like so during the summertime uh i played you know soccer in the fall or whatever you know and i skied in the summer or whatever and i and i just i always remember this where like you know the coach during off season like you know preparing for the fall soccer season uh, he'd always give us this like you know track homework and like just running stuff and everything like that and i remember uh being a little kid and just like you know, I'd have my, I'd have my list of things that I had to do. Like, you know, you know, got to go run, you know, miles this week and like play, you know, do drills and do the stuff. And I had that like literally taped to my wall. And then, um, but I, 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 I couldn't go water skiing until like those things were done. And so I remember just like being up at like three in the morning, just pushing myself, like go do your miles. Now. I mean, no one's watching you. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no one, no one really checking in on you, but it was like, it was yeah. something that was there. And so I always use that as kind of like a, a, a kind of a, oh man, I have had this for like a long time. Like it's like a weird OCD of just like, all right. So I go and like, you know, butt crack a dawn, just like out there running my miles and like kicking the ball and dribbling and doing that stuff. And then, yeah. you know, 6 a.m. I'm like, all right, dad, like, can we go on the boat? Like, let's go do this thing, you know? Yeah. That couple, that couple, up. yeah. Yeah, but look at where that got you. I mean, it's like <laughs> the stuff that they, these, you know, speakers, they say, like, it's what we do in the dark. Like, it's when mm -hmm. people aren't looking. Like, you know, like, for example, me, like, they don't know. Like, 1130, I'm like, hey, I, I got to do my run. This is the only time I can yeah. fit it in. You know, but, like, that's just how it works. So you just got to fit in when we, when we can. Yeah. So when you played soccer and everything like that, what was, like, the parent setup dynamic? Like, for me, like, my dad would always take me to sports, but my mom wouldn't only show up to, like, you know, championship games or something yeah. like playoffs or something big. Um, what was it like? Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting. Like, cause I, I, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't really have a lot. I mean, like certainly when I was a young person, like, you know, I was born with, as you can probably tell, and as you, as anyone who knows me can tell you, like I, I was born with an insane amount of energy and like, I'm just like always going, always going. So God bless my my mom and dad that always like they kept me in sports all the time you know when i was a kid like just just do it just do it just go 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 you know what i mean so i, I played soccer rugby did the whole thing and then uh you know just so i i had that support all the time really it was interesting like i moved out at 17 and and then just kind of like did the whole college thing and like you know really had the support with them but like i was on i was yes, doing same. my own thing yeah, so it was like, you know, I was looking for sponsors myself so to pay my way to ski tournaments and like, yeah, when I, you know, went to the US Nationals, like they would show up or whatever, but yeah, it was kind of it's kind of like, oh, good job, you know, like whatever, you know. <laughs> we'll see if we fit it in, you know. It's uh, you know, I just I always kind of just like did it myself, but yeah, for sure when I was younger, like they were always always kind of there to to kind of do that. And it's the same thing here, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm always in fact, it's it's funny now that I have kids, I'm always like trying to do more and I have girls and they're not like boys who were like me like rah, you know and so it's, yeah. it's funny because they're now they're just like get out of here dad you know like whatever but i was you know i took that same type of like passion for uh that i that i would want you know what i mean to to my kids and so yeah coaching the yeah. track team and like going to you know they we grew up in the kids grew up in hawaii so it was like you know yeah. always they did rodeo so it was like you know always at rodeo practice always doing the you know canoe paddling and that type of thing so yeah it's it's, it's cool. cool it's important cool, man and and I got three girls, so oh um, damn, yeah, man, and they're act, like really, really cute as hell as well. This is more dangerous. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> and then also you mentioned like you're out the door out of your family's house at like 17. I was as well, like 17 mm -hmm. year old college freshman going from Connecticut to New Hampshire. I don't know how I ended up there, but I did. But I got to find myself, you know, away from the nest, which is mm -hmm. cool because you're in your town everybody knows you and they know the hickman brothers and then you move to new hampshire it's like you get to start like a fresh slate to be yeah. you um that's what i loved about it the most but but yeah training um 
what's what's training look like when you like before you had kids versus right now? Yeah, that's it's that's like I think I got more driven when when the kids came, um, just because I you know I had kids real young, right? So we were I was just a couple of years out of college doing the thing. I traveled, I surfed all over Europe, and then bang, like we had kids. And, and then all of a sudden, so I was like, that was when I was like into firefighting and do my thing. And then this thing came up in 20, 2007, I kind of got a glimpse of it, this thing called CrossFit. And I was like, oh man, yeah. what is that? You know? And so I was training at, um, and this is like, you know, so 2007, I, my youngest daughter was born in 2007. So we had had two kids by that point. So it was like this new, this new career kind of like jump and I wouldn't say career. It was like just this new passion kind of came up. It's like before my youngest daughter was born, I was like, I got to go. I really wanted to jump back into soccer and go play, uh, you know, for on the professional teams and that type of thing. So I was kind of like practicing a, a bit there. Um, but, you know, when I found this CrossFit fitness thing, I was like, wow, like there's like these competitions that you can do. And, and, and then, you know, you can train at the gym. And so my buddy Jamie and I, who's still a good friend of mine from years and years ago, we'd like run around this Globo gym, like throwing up weights and doing that type of thing. And so we, we kind of put that into practice and then, um, yeah, it was pretty much, it was, it was all over once, once, you know, like the firefighting and the CrossFit kind of came into play because then I was like, you got literally paid to train. You know what I mean? It was part of my job to be as fit as I could be. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I worked on a, a helicopter module that was like, you know, where I, we were a very elite kind of like firefighting squad. So, um, we, yeah. you know, fast roped and did a bunch of crazy stuff. So, um, so yeah, we, we spent a lot of time training. And so that discipline just got like, I just got, to, I got to like, just jump all in and like, just keep digging myself into this, into this tra training modality. So, uh, so yeah, before, before it was pretty casual. I mean, I was doing sports specific stuff and then, yeah, once the kids were born and I found CrossFit, it was like, okay, like let's, let's just freaking go dude. And, and so, yeah. um, so yeah, it was, I mean, you know, and then in, in the peak, you know, when I was still in my like late twenties, maybe like early thirties, it was like three sessions a day. Like I was trying to go to the games and stuff like that. And you know, that, that was like the, that was the gym. We had a gym, you know what I mean? We owned a gym at that point. So I was like, I was, I was all in, <laughs> all in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. So like when you're uh, training now, what's it like now? Cause I see like you do like some calisthenics mixed mm. with some CrossFit. Like, yeah. Pretty much like anything that doesn't hurt me. <laughs> anything that doesn't hurt. I, I, uh, yeah. I've been lucky knock on wood. Uh, I haven't had any major stuff. I got out of skiing and wakeboarding before my knees blew out. Um, the only thing like I've, you know, just broken things and wrists and collarbones and things like that. So just more protective of that stuff. I, I, uh, you know, nowadays it's here, here's, here's the longevity. It's play for everybody that's out there, right? You know, go heavy, do yoga and, and just, and be mindful of your rest. And like, because once you've built, like, especially if you started when you were younger, um, in your twenties or whatever, and you've built that, that base of fitness for like 10 to 12 years. Um, dude, you can, you can do literally anything you want. Like that's like the greatest freedom that I can say that I have at 43 years old now is like, I literally can step into anything. Like you want to put me on like the steepest mountain and go skiing. I'll, I'll, I might not be the best, but I'm going to definitely be better than average. Um, yeah. you want to put me like wherever I can go bullfighting. I, I could figure that one out. You know what I mean? Like your, your fitness, like just kind of like stays there. So it's a longevity play for me where I like, I don't necessarily need to go out and like, you know, clean and jerk, you know, 330 pounds anymore. I, that, that those days are over. I just like tonight I went and back squatted like 385. Cool. Sick. It's, I mean, nowhere near my lifetime PR, but Hey, like whatever I squat once a week now, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. and then the, and then t doing yoga, like do So I usually train three sessions a day to get to your point. So I run the dog in the morning, which is a, t I just do a small, like, you know, two to four mile run, uh, 5am yeah. get up and just do that. Um, come in, eat breakfast, bang, go straight to yoga, get flexy because you got to be flexy. And it's like, it's like an hour. So I always like to talk about this too. He's like, Oh, yoga. Like, I don't know. It's like, dude, it's an hour where I get to practice handstands. Like, it's awesome. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Go practice gymnastics, you know, go practice that stuff. And then in the evening, usually like, you know, after I'm doing my calls, I'll, I'll jump in the gym, which is 10 feet from my desk. And I get to go, you know, bang some weights. And, and I stick to the, I stick to the movements like, you know, main primals, right? Like, you know, vertical press, vertical pull, you know, hinge squat, you know, that thing type of stuff. Yeah. So 
and that generally keeps me. And then, yeah, like I, obviously my anaerobic days, maybe once, maybe twice, you know, I'll do it in, it, you know, like tonight's cardio, tonight's little session after my lifting was just literally hitting some interval work. So, and it's nothing crazy. I'm not like, I'm not destroying myself like I used to, you know what I'm saying? Cause it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't do me any good. I felt like, I mean, there's, if, when I look back on it, um, like I was overtrained, like fully overtrained for so many years, you know what I mean? Like not sleeping yeah. good, like, you know, just beating myself up. So yeah, I'm yeah. smarter. Now. I mean, <laughs> but you, you don't become seven time CrossFit regional athlete just from showing up to planet fitness once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Not anymore. Um, that's for sure. I mean, these guys, yeah. these guys are on another level nowadays. Seriously. But yeah, I mean, what he's saying guys is just be mindful of your body and reading that pattern, making sure you're mixing and flexibility, mobility, but also fun stuff to start off your day um, before you hit the grind. But he's found a certain like equation that works well for him. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I was doing yoga um, a lot during OCR, there was many times my body went in a certain way that it shouldn't have <laughs> went, but it should have broke or hurt something. But my body just was flexible flexible yeah. with it yeah instead of like breaking something it was like a small little sprain or something like that right um so i i agree i, I need to do more of that to be honest yeah. it's just it, it's it's crazy just time management especially with three <laughs> small kiddos nine seven and three like these kids take i'm coaching hockey like it's just wild. No, you're um, busy. You're busy. Biz I'm nonstop busy, but it's it, it's it's a good busy. Like it's the stuff that we're never gonna forget. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's worth it. Yeah. Like I coach girls hockey today, and it's just it's just fun. You know, you're just changing lives, passing the torch, and that's what's all about. But yeah. um, so when you were training, um, with training so much for CrossFit, and you had mm -hmm. the girls growing up, um how did you switch that like CrossFit training switch on and then turn it off? Yeah. Yeah. I mean like that, this is where the teammate her teamwork of like my wife and I kind of came in. Right. So, cause I was training, but I was also coaching, you know, and obviously on shift too. And I was like doing fire, I was doing fire. I was doing the gym, which we owned and then like, you know, being a parent as well. So definitely managing that. And we did everything together when the kids are young, like, like, you know, this, right. Like, at seven, nine, or nine, seven, and three, like they're pretty much with you all the time. You know what I mean? It's not like yeah. they, they hang out too much. And, you know, like in a couple of years, your nine year old will probably start becoming like the live in babysitter, you know, essentially. Uh, yeah. But, you know, so during that period was when I was competing heavily. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, literally every single weekend I was at a competition, you know trying to win, trying to like, you know, expand. And, and it was just a thing, you know I mean? CrossFit around this time uh, was there, there were that many comps and there were like, you know, things that the buzz was so wild. So, uh, so yeah, we went everywhere together. I mean, we were always together. And so they, they were, I mean, you know, it's funny too, cause like the kids grew up, you know, with these other kids that were always at the comps, you know what I mean? Like they did the, did the thing. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's just managing the time. I mean, obviously, you know, Sundays are always family day. Uh, so just always having that and, and then, you know, we're really tight. Like the four of us are just, you know, we do everything together and we designed our family that way. And, um, and yeah, so it's, it's, it was, you know, and then we raised our kids, our kids were raised like in a gym around a bunch of adults, you know what I'm saying? So they, uh, they have a pretty good perspective on kind of how things are, uh, how things are, are right there. And they were like within our conversations and at our like, you know, gym parties and that type of thing. So they know what's up. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're just, they're in the atmosphere and, and, mm -hmm. I think being close to and separating yourself from society, you moved to Hawaii. I can relate to that. We moved to St. Thomas for mm. a bit. Um, and then we traveled across the country to Sedona and back for like a year and a half. Whoa. In RV, big RV, um, 40 foot RV. And uh, we got rid of it. We got back to the house and all that stuff. And like, we're back in Jacksonville, but we're just like, it's just too much, uh, too yeah. much going on. Uh, so I think we're going to just move a little bit more north away from people. Um, we just like that. Our kids are homeschooled and we just, we like to not be part of like the regular humdrum. It's too much yeah. traffic. Um, but I agree. I, they go to the gym with me sometimes. They see me running and then out of nowhere, they're running in soccer. And I'm like, you're running so well. She's like, I literally just like make you want to like cry. It's dad. Like, they're like, yeah. oh, cause I saw you daddy. And I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, <laughs> you're doing right. That's, 
Yeah, yeah. So like that, that means Daddy's doing something right. But um, but yeah, let's let's switch gears. So for guys that are listening, um, I know you mentioned some hacks that you have for time management, but I know that's a big piece of the puzzle as a dad because we are providers for our family most likely. Um, I know there's some stay at home dads out there, but um, you know we're providers for our family. They're we are pulled left and right nonstop. We don't have a chance to even look at our phone once the kids are home. Um, what are some, some other hacks you have other than waking up at 5 a.m.? Yeah, I, th- I think it's just, I, I mean, as you know, and as probably everybody, everybody knows, like it's, I think the including the families, especially when they're younger, including them in the things that you do um, is a huge win for everybody. Uh, and that, and that's not necessarily a time management thing, but it like it creates this quality time vibe. Um, I'm so blessed that like my younger one who's 15 now, she still comes to the gym and works out with me and stuff like that. So, so that's, that's really cool. So it's like two birds, one stone, right? Like we're getting the train, you know, but we're also getting some good quality, you know, father daughter time in there as well. Um, and, and then the other, the other thing that I think, um, I learned, uh, I think, you know, as, especially as we, as we are like, you know, husbands and we are also fathers and that type of thing, you're always, you're in this provider, as you were saying, this provider role. And, and certainly you're always like kind of out there, but, um, and you're always trying to make sure everyone's happy. Like that's, I don't know, that's just maybe just my personality or maybe everybody has personality and maybe a lot of guys can relate to this. You're just like always trying to make sure, especially when you live in a house with women, <laughs> like all the time, you're just like, is everybody good? Is it, are we good? Are we good? Are we, good? Are we happy? Um, it, but I think that the real, and luckily again, I have a re- amazing relationship with my wife. We've been together almost 20 years. Um, it's, it, she's never like, you know, not told me like, oh, you can't do that or whatever. So um, where I'm going with this is like, you know, to be the best possible v- version of whatever you're doing at that time, you got to make sure you're happy too. You know what I'm saying? So yep. making sure that like, you know, if you, you know, for me right now, balancing work, balancing so much of other stuff. Like I don't get to like compete as much as I want to. Um, but you know, putting that on the list and like making it a priority, like, like flying to Germany, if I have to, I don't really want to, but you know, I'd rather race be closer, but you know what I mean? It's like, if that's what it takes, like I to make, to like fill that hole inside of me, that's like, you got to do it. I mean, the, the ripple effects in the world around me are going to be going to be huge. So Um, so that, that's a hack, maybe not necessarily on the time management stuff, but it's a hack on like kind of creating this, this world of happiness around you, um, where you are able to give back with a full heart, you know what I'm saying? That's, then that's really, really what I, what I want more than, more than gaining minutes or hours or whatever. It's like, am I in the world kind of creating this aura of good and this aura of love around me? So that, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, so basically, to be happy. <laughs> you need to, yeah, you got to show love to yourself in order to give love, mm-hmm. pure love to others. And absolutely, a like, million percent. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I also heard something. I'm, I, I run a physician recruiting company where I get, you know, doctors' jobs, and been doing that since 2017. And I was listening to some training, and some, some guy said something like, "Hey, you know, there's business owners out there of recruiting companies that will save their money and just never spend it and save it for a rainy day." But there, you want to be able to spend your money on things that make you feel alive. So, you know, for, mm. for to travel to Cali from Florida just for a race, and, and that's what gives you that high to, to be more present and alive, um, it's worth it. You know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. I mean, obviously, you don't need to buy a Lamborghini or anything. But, uh, mm. you know, just doing things that make you happy. Um, so, yeah, so for the dad... I don't know if there's anyone in your in your network that you can think of, but if you can talk to a gentleman that uh, you may know or may have known that, you know, they're they had a, they had a family, had kids for the first time, and they've just ever since that happened, they've just really lost themselves. Uh, before that, they were like an athlete; they were really focused, but then they just couldn't juggle life. They may be overweight, maybe on medications, just maybe having a drinking problem. You know, what would you say to that gentleman to get back on track? Yeah, dude, um, I think what what that person usually feels and it's and it's men and women alike and in, in, that I've seen in my in my years of doing this is like um, 
they feel lost, you know what I'm saying? And this is why, again, so much of my personal ethos, and maybe just because I'm jaded because it is part of my personal ethos, but you, you've got to find that community, right? Again, it's, it's like, it's that friend, it's that person, it's wh- whoever. I guarantee you, I'm, I'm telling you, if you put yourself out there in the world, um, you will find that, that individual that's going to help you and support you and get you to like back to that level. Um, and then the second thing is, I mean, obviously, that's a great external motivator is to like go out and search and, and certainly putting yourself out to the world um, instills a confidence in yourself and the knock on effects of that confidence are essentially better discipline and that discipline then yields like, you know, better habits and better processes. Right. So that's that's the kind of process that I can go. You can also flip it and go the other way. And that's like, you know, start with little habits, little wins that you could take through the day. I mean, every day. I mean, I, t- I tell you, like, I mean, I know that yoga is amazing for me and I love to do it every day, but it's like, it's, do I take that? Cause there's at that moment, that hour during my morning where I like, I go to class, but I could go to like a CrossFit class or I could do this. Yeah. And I, and, but then I leave there every day and I go, that was a dope win. My body feels better. Like, you know what I mean? So like it could be 15 minutes, whatever. Oh, oh, here's another thing that I found that it even is even easier for those individuals that are out there. Uh, and it relates to, to fitness. So um, YouTube. So check this out. So YouTube has it is like this amazing like library nowadays, especially I know because I created a lot of the content on there or some content over the years um, yeah. of these like seven to 12 to 15 minute blocks of fitness. Right. If you are out there and you are like struggling to make a habit like you can freaking do seven to 10 minutes, dude, pop on something, find a trainer. I mean, Apple, I think Apple, my wife does this like has this like Irish guy that she likes on the Apple fitness thing or whatever. So I know Apple has it out there too. But, um, so for me, I found that out. I've re, or I guess refound it. Uh, when I had this, I this I did a, uh, a hundred burpees every day for one year, uh, two, two years ago. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Cause last year was in pain all last year. Uh, so yeah, two years ago I did that. It was a, it was the dumbest fitness challenge I've ever done. But I mean, I certainly did a lot of burpees <laughs> and they don't get better by the way. Um, but I damaged myself. And <laughs> like an, so it's like an ice bath that it always sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I found like this bat, this dude, Dr. Eric Hin- or Dr. Eric Goodman, uh, who does this foundation training and it's 12 minutes, right? It's a 12 minute ser- series, the same thing every day. But dude, I did that. And I, you know, I spent thousands of dollars of the PT and then I did this 12 minutes a day and in like three months I was totally healed, but I, it like stuck with me and I was like, sick dude these 12 minutes every day where i'm just doing these stretches but like i leave there and that's like a win dude and that's and that that whole sure. concept of like getting a win getting a habit getting the thing it's like it's like it, the, yeah. again it just it it trickles down into like you know more and more wins as you go through the day and before you know it your consciousness is telling you like like you're you're searching for that like awesome like I, I was able to give my daughter a hug the day before school, you know what I mean? Because the like, teenagers are running around. Oh, sick. That was a win. You know, I was able to, you know, eat three solid meals, you know, without running around, like doing my thing. Solid. That was a win. Exactly. So I think, I think that that's so on the converse side of finding the community and the working backwards from there, like personally getting these small wins, banking on those small wins, developing that discipline through those small wins is the other aspect. Yeah, I agree. And I think when you start something new, um, a lot of men want what's in the men's fitness magazine and that, you know, they want that instant win. Um, unfortunately, I don't like that. But they, I know if I slip on uh, bodybuilding or getting in shape or whatever it is, like I always start stupid slow, like low on weights um, or low on miles for running, whatever that is. But like when you know you can. You can bicep curl, I don't know, 50s, dumbbells, but you start with, like, 15s. You know what I mean? You do that for a week, and then the next week, once you beat that, you go up to 20, and you keep going up five pounds. That, for me, I found my fitness um, back a long time ago by just doing that. Uh, Mm -hmm. It was just so simple. And I had a little notepad, and every time I got three sets in a row, 10 at that weight, that next week I went up in five pounds. So it was cool. Um, so yeah, starting small is, is definitely huge. Having the right tribe, having the right community. Like there's uh CJ Finley in, uh, yeah. In know, Austin. Austin. Yeah. in Austin, yeah. they got squash fitness. Like they yeah. have a community for real. Like, you know, you just got to find your, your community that's out there. I mean, get it. Core fitness has their own community here too. Um, 
Yeah, I got to come check that out when I'm in Jacksonville next time. Yeah, man. I mean, and and everyone's got their vibe, you know, just just find a community. Like me and um, the guy I interviewed last week, Izzy, like we talk every day, like, hey, like literally we send him affirmations like I am, da 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 like I will, da 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 like that's how you keep each other accountable. Mm-hmm. So it's good stuff, man. So, all right. So the fun side, uh, what is your spirit animal and why? <laughs> well, um, I – am addicted to flight like I, I feel like if there was one one power one thing that i could have it'd be to to fly i just i absolutely love it um i love parachuting i used to jump out of helicopters for a living like i just i just love the idea so eagle boom like this guy right here on the back of my arm yeah so my, uh, an nice. eagle yeah, is my uh, out next time i see you yeah, my spirit animal for sure. Yeah, I'm a big feather. I have a phoenix on this arm, big old eagle nice. on this arm. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big uh, big eagle guy. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's that that's just and they're just raw. And if you've been to like if you've seen them like up in Canada, they're just like big old bald eagles. They're just like I don't know. Yeah, it's it's cool. So, yeah, I definitely no, they're would badass, say. <laughs> man. I, I'm a big hawk guy, so it's like I see them when I go for my slow runs all the time. Mm-hmm. Like it's just they're out there. Like it's awesome. Yeah, but um the discipline of it like just just seeing how awesome like they they fly on their own and they do their shit the way they they hunt to to feed you know it's it's cool man i love it yeah but um what are what are some big if anyone wants to see a race other than germany what are some other events um that you would like that you've got planned for the rest of the year yeah so i think you know i mean the summer's like coming up on us like so fast and i gotta like i have to start booking these things out but uh, one thing since moving to Colorado, I've like changed, traded in my surfboards and now I like, I'm all about mountain biking. So, uh, whether it's, um, you know, some enduro race or definitely downhill racing, uh, I'm into, so, uh, definitely want to sign up for those. There's some, like, uh, some friends of mine we're all in this chat about right now, like trying to figure out what a uh, big road race that we would do. Um, so yeah, I think th- cool. something on, something on two wheels is definitely in my future. Um, and then I, you know, I used to do three ultra marathons a year Um, and, you know, just through Tough Mudder and different things like that. It kind of just worked out pretty well. Um, I haven't done that for a couple of years. And so I definitely would like to get back into that. I I, um, haven't seen one that I really am jiving with, you know. Um, And then the other thing isn't necessarily a competition, but more of a challenge. And that's I've been eyeing this thing for the past couple of years. It's called the Three Peaks Challenge in uh, the U.K., and actually okay. going to Manchester in a couple, in like a month or whatever, I'm going to go do one of the mountains. So it's, you climb, it's the, how fast you can climb and then like basically transit to the other ones of the three tallest peaks, the Mount Snowden, Mount Scoffle and Mount, I can't remember the one in the Wales, but it's the highest peaks in uh, Scotland, the UK and Wales. And you, you climb it, you drive to the next Crazy. one or bike, ride your bike. Some people run them. Um, and so the fastest in the world is like 15 hours to do it. Um, wow. you know, the mountains over there aren't that big, but, uh, that's something I definitely want to do. Uh, and I would really love to do it. Like, you know, with, uh, there's this girl I used to race with, she's an adaptive athlete, but, but, uh, we'll see. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll kind of awesome, keep man. that one on the, on the back burner. Just like, you know, it's awesome. Just racing for experience. Like that's just mm-hmm. like the experience of that is way more thrilling. Like, than just showing up to a deck of race. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> that's I mean? the like, thing, that's, dude. It's like that's awesome. It's monumental. We've uh, we've built this base of fitness like over years and years, and literally, you could just like turn me loose. I, I mean, I I don't know if I could ever like. I mean, I'm sure I could with the bright training, but like you drop me on the mountain right now, I I definitely am probably more fit than a lot of people that are climbing Everest right now. You know what I mean? Or like whatever. It's like I th- I know that my mental and my physical strength are like it's pretty bulletproof at this point. So <laughs> like, man. give me a challenge. I'll do it. <laughs> I love it. That's yeah. so cool. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I know a lot of people know you, but if you don't know you rock, what is your IG? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So you can find me on, on Instagram. I'm always posting. Um, I find that I, I have a, a pretty cool now that I, I train, I don't have a gym anymore. I just kind of trained out of my garage. So I have this kind of like cool garage gym following. So if you're looking for like cool training and there's a million programs out there, whatever, but if you want to grab one of my workouts, you're always welcome. Uh, so E rock awesome. underscore eight Oh eight. And, uh, you can find me there. So there, and then obviously all over the high rocks Instagram. I mean, we're always doing the live streams and, you know, pretty yes, much sir. a bunch of different things. And then now with again, faster, I'll be doing, you'll see me a lot on those live events. Yeah. 
So tell us about Criterion. Yeah, so Criterion is a fun one uh, if you're familiar at all with with uh, CrossFit um, and Wadapalooza, especially if you're a Florida guy. Uh, so down in South Florida, there's a gym uh, called Peak 360. My buddy Guido owns it. Guido and I have been, we're the same age. We've been in the game a long time. He and I have partnered up. And now with Again Faster, we're launching an age group uh, competition. It's uh, pretty much open to anybody. The very scalable workouts, nothing wild with massive muscle ups or snatches or whatever it's it's all you know good quality movement but very very uh uh, thoughtfully curated and so we have this competition starting this friday um it's a 30 dollar buy-in you can go to again faster and find out more information there on how to register but it's 30 dollar buy-in uh we're giving away ten thousand dollars in cash so for each age group so you're not racing against like you know you know, for me, like racing against eight year old, I'm actually racing like the 40 to 44. So just like at High Rocks, you're racing within your age group. Um, and we're yep. giving cash out to all the winners of, uh, of each age group. So it's a, it's a big, yeah. big chunk. Um, and it'll be a lot of fun. It's gonna be two weeks, six workouts. And uh, th- first three workouts are the first week and then second three workouts the second week. And um, yeah, again, it's, it's, uh, it's gonna be a cool community event. That is cool, man. I I, I was checking out the site. I was trying to figure out if, like, a standard hybrid guy that's never done CrossFit before. Oh, yeah. You're fine. Those workouts would be doable, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, that was, like, a big thing for me. And, again, like, with, uh, you know, kind of this this melding of, you know, one thing that we've seen. I saw it with Tough Mudder and then now, obviously, way more with High Rocks, given that it is purely fitness-related. Um, there's – there are so many gyms out there and I think we, we tunnel vision down like their pathways, right? We get into our little niches with fitness, but like as high rocks has shown us, there is a massive swath of people out there that are all looking for ways to improve themselves, ways to challenge themselves. And like high rocks does that. And so that's what I'm trying to do with, yeah. with again, faster now is like, again, providing community through fitness. That's like my main thing. Right. And so, Criterion is going to be uh, a great step in that direction, showing that, again, Faster is, like, you know, going to be, you know, outside of High Rocks, you know, kind of like uh, a great pathway for people. If they're looking for a challenge, they want to, like, compete. They want to, you know, the cool thing about what we're doing with, again, Faster and all of our events there, outside of Criterion, that's online, of course. Um, But our other events, like gyms, like, of all types and shapes and sizes, can host our events at their facility. So it's a pretty cool yeah. model. And we basically take care of all the logistics for them so they can just like activate the community, provide the coolest possible experience for their members. That's awesome. And mm-hmm. so you have high prize money that you normally don't see at a race. You just get a, a t-shirt or a flag. <laughs> in the middle. Um, I like the flags. I, I do like the flags. I, I like to hang them up. Um, but then also, you don't have to fly to the event. You could do it yep, anywhere. anywhere. You could put a camera up, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what are what's some equipment that people need in order to compete? Yeah, so we'll, we'll just the standard stuff. So dumbbell set, kettlebell set. Uh, you'll need a jump rope. You'll need like uh, a barbell with some plates on it. You know, nothing crazy in terms of like the weights, but just like you know something like that. Um, and that's pretty much it. You know, you're uh, and yeah, definitely like a pull up bar. Uh, cause we will like, cool. you know, be doing some like toes to bar and that type of thing. stuff. So that was awesome. Just, mm-hmm. uh, it's pretty cool. You're doing something like that for the people. Cause it, not all of us dads are able to just go fly places randomly or drive eight hours. So, cause it, there's things like T-ball and <laughs> <laughs> soccer practice. And stuff. Oh man, you were in but, it. Um, yeah, I'm deep, man. I'm deep, but it's cool. It's cool. Uh, it is definitely worth it, but it, you know, that's why me and my wife, we, we stay up later and that's our time and we wake up early sometimes we wake up when we want to sometimes and that's how it goes. But, uh, that's awesome, man. Thanks for sharing that. So again, mm-hmm. starts this Friday, right? Yep. Yep. It starts this Friday. We released the first three workouts. And so, yeah, there's still time to sign up 30 bucks and, and come in and, uh, have, have a blast with our global community. So only 30 bucks and you can potentially win a couple thousand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then Powerlift, actually, I see your thing on this. So Powerlift has actually stepped up. They're throwing down like 10, I mean, probably equal in product too. So like, not only are we giving out cash uh, for the first, second and third, but it's also, uh, we have a ton of Powerlift products. So if you, you know, like year, like year supplies type of thing, like the Powerlift is really stepping up. 
Yeah, they're dope. They're, great, great company. So cool. I mean, I, have, I was only with them for a couple months, and they're like, here's some T-shirts, and here's some swag, and, you know, I just put it on the, my, my Christmas tree. So they're cool, man. Um, and then who else are your sponsors for? Yeah, so we have Virus, uh, so that, like, the hat you have on right there. Um, yeah, and yeah, there you go. Um, so the virus is uh, obviously keeping it in the family there. Uh, so yeah. they are going to be doing our t shirts on that. They're the ones throwing up a chunk of that ten thousand dollars in cash. Um, Flux shoes, I'll show you these guys. These are some great shoes. You, you'll see me wearing these at the uh, at the high rocks races. They are like, yeah. they have these like little, little kind of massagers in there dude they're they're super sick flux cool. shoes is there we have immortal coffee we've got uh kate's real food uh yeah the list goes on and on tiro bar um yeah and it, it's uh it's a pretty stacked little list of of folks rpm jump ropes that type of thing so yeah big, big sponsors awesome stuff so um any last words for that dad athlete that, that's out there that's listening to this yeah, man, just uh, love on your kids. I mean, nowadays, I think more than anything, I mean, we're talking, uh, If I, I don't want to get political or anything like that, but, like, you know, there's, like, these big walkouts. I think my, my kids are taking part in this big walkout. Like, it just, it, we got to we gotta just, as parents, just, like, listen to our kids, spend the time with them, tell them, like, just how much we love them because uh, especially when they're in this, like, middle, you know, teenage, middle school age, man, it's, it's tough on them and it's tough. It's not like how you and I kind of grew up, you know I mean? It's, it's a different world now. And, and, um, so yeah, just, just always keep loving on your kids and try your best to relate to them, <laughs> even though it's hard sometimes. And, uh, and then just, yeah, just make yourself. And, and again, like kind of what I was saying, like, if you want that relationship to be happy, you got to be happy. So make sure you take time for yourself. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, man, I, I love your energy. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah. Everyone sign up. It's only $30. Like it's, it's going to be a great event. They got some great sponsors. This guy is just a phenomenal guy overall. And I, I look forward to potentially competing against you next season. You never know. <laughs> I'll be 40 to 44 in uh, December. Yeah. So, wow. That's cool. Right, right, around, right around the corner. That's cool. And like, then you um, said you're coming to Anaheim. I, I mean, you're kind of telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> oh you don't know okay you don't know yet no, like, I, 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 the, like the universe like it was just like okay he's telling me i'm going yeah. um i'm signed up for it but i'm, I'm playing it by ear i'm just trying to okay like, try oh, to, cool. like, try to feel these these signs that come to my way and like, yeah hey, last minute flight let's go um, yeah that's what happened with miami like literally three-day taper and it was just a great event so um yeah thank you for coming on the show episode cool. 16 with eric botsford appreciate it Thank you. Thank you. Much, awesome. You Sweet, Peace. dude. All right. See Thank ya. You. See ya.